Hi everyone, welcome back. In today's lecture, we will discuss about basic concept of electrotherapy part 2. In previous video, we had discussed part 1 of basic concepts in electrotherapy. Today, we are going to discuss further concept in the basics of electrotherapy. So, we will discuss about a capacitor or a condenser, then about inductor, then a very crucial concept known as the magnetism, and then about electromagnetic induction. So, let's discover into each of this topic in detail in this video. As the first one, let us discover about a capacitor or a condenser. Some of one peculiarity about most of the topics that we discuss as the basic concept in electrotherapy is that most of these topics you might have learned in your the, the previous classes in your school life and most probably in your plus twos. You might have learned more depth in physics about it, but we don't need that such deep concept. We just need to brush up the ideas and have a very brief idea on some of these topics. So what is a capacitor or a condenser? Do anyone remember what is a capacitor? A capacitor is a device that is used to store charges. So for example, we have uh, considered the example of a water tank in your home. What is the purpose of that water tank? use water tank to store water similar to that the capacitor is a device that is used to store charges so one peculiarity or the important function of a capacitor is that it helps in storing the charges so it is mostly made up of two metal plates which are separated from each other with help of an insulating material for example uh, consider this as one metal plate and this one as the another metal plate so both of these metal plates are separated from each other they are not attached together they are separated from each other with the help of an insulating not a conducting with the help of an insulating material that material is known as dielectric material or dielectric constant so most of the capacitors are made up of two metal plates which are separated each other with the help of an insulating material known as dielectric material so how do you define capacitor capacitor is a device that is used to store charges they consist of two metal plates separated with the help of an insulating material so imagine this metal plate imagine it's positive polarity it's positively charged this one is negatively charged so if there is no insulating material what happens uh, you cannot store charge of this two of the materials can come together so what we have is an insulating material that separates both of this material and uh, both of these metals and helps in storing the charges on this one and this one uh, individually or separately uh, or separately so what happens is that if the insulating material is present the charges get stored so you can store charge in a capacitor as and when required the capacitor can dissipate or give away the charges so that is the function of capacitor and uh, the unit of capacitance capacitor is known as the or capacitor is capacitance is known as the what you call farad and the one farad you know, usually we don't express in terms of farad but we express in terms of microfarad where one microfarad is one in millionth of a farad but uh, we also need to understand what is capacitance capacitance is nothing it's just the property of the capacitor so the property of the capacitor to store charge is known as the capacitance so that are the important things that you need to know about capacitor then uh, an equation of uh, the charge stored in a capacitor can be given by charge is equal to the capacitance of that object or the conductor into the voltage so charge is represented by q capacitance by the capital c and voltage by you know v so q equal to c into v so these are the most important things that you need to know so capacitor is used to store charge two metal plates are separated by a medium known as the dielectric and basic unit is farad capacitance is usually expressed in microfarad which is one in millionth of a farad it holds electric charge when and when required and dissipates the charges or gives up the stored charge when the situation comes or when the need is there 
So this diagram are, uh, just represents a capacitance. The uh, figure two is the, uh, the is the way in which you draw the circuit for a capacitor or you represent a capacitor circuit. And here you can see in that uh, in that diagram, which is like a battery, you can see um, the white lines or the white ones known as the metal plates, two metal plates. In between, you can see that orange colored dielectric material. So what happens is that this dielectric material helps in storing the charges when and when required. So the charges can be stored uh, uh, in the capacitor. In capacitance, uh, um, the capacitance in series is often denoted by, do you remember the equation for resistance in series? It is R1 plus R2 plus R3. Here, capacitance in series is represented as 1 by C1 plus 1 by C2 plus 1 by C3. And capacitance in parallel is opposite to the series one, uh, which is uh, C1 plus C2 plus C3. You don't need to remember it, but it is well and good if you can just uh, like at least understand that the equation we are not going to use the equation and find out the capacitance of an object anything like that like uh, what we used to do in the physics lectures or physics classes so that's is the concepts of capacitor let's see why do we need capacitor and what is the need of this discussion in electrotherapy and and um, there are two types of capacitor one is a fixed capacitor and a variable kind of capacitor you know a fixed capacitor is just two uh, leaves two inter interleaved metal plates with air as the dielectric medium so in fixed capacitor we just have interleaved metal plates two metal plates will be there only two metal plates will be there and they are separated by air as a dielectric medium whereas in variable capacitor the term variable denotes it what happens is that there are different sets of metal plates this is one set of metal plates another set of metal plates similarly in different sets of metal plates attached together so what happens is that when you increase or decrease the a distance between these metal plates of course you can increase or decrease the charge that is stored as well as you have a knob something like a knob which you can turn off some of the uh, what do you call it, sets of metal plates this type of uh, uh, what you call capacitors are seen in diet uh, short wave diathermy etc so you, you know that the knob that we are using in short wave diathermy it's all the applications of capacitor so that is why we need to learn all this kind of stuff because most of the electrotherapeutic devices works on the basics of this uh, electricity and basis of this phys physics so this type of capacitors are used in various devices like mri machines ct scan machine x-ray machines in in electrotherapy like short wave diathermy machines in emg analysis machine in um uh, in like uh, what you call uh, in different filters that we use in uh, in in uh, electrotherapy like long uh, low pass filter high pass filter band filter etc and in various oscillators and timers so what are the uses of capacitors capacitors are used to filter circuit they are uh, allows they are used to uh, allow the passage of alternating current whereas block the direct current as well as to store the charges the main function is always storing the charge but at the same time they help in uh, and passing the of the alternating current and ac as well as blocking the dc and also helps in filtering different circuits so that is the concept of a capacitor and now we move on to the inductor which is in or the inductance which is not much important as capacitor you just need to understand the basics of inductor inductor is a coil of wire inductance or inductor is a coil of wire that traces change in electricity passing through them inductor is a coil of wire that traces changes in electricity that passes through them it is used to store energy as magnetic field whereas capacitor was storing energy as electric field or electric potential difference here the inductance store energy as a magnetic field it is often denoted by the SI unit Henry that is the SI unit of inductance it is used in transformers chocks and more different motors etc and the unit is as I called as I told the Henry so what is an inductor it is a coil of wire that is used to store 
energy in the form of the form of magnetic field and it resists any change in the electric current that passes through them so that is known as the inductor let's see more in depth into the inductor here you can see a diagram where the capacitance or a capacitor is shown which store potential energy as energy in the form of electric field whereas an inductor you can see this diagram you you might have seen this inductor in different uh, electric modalities or electric devices if you had a chance to open the example for example you can see something like similar in the fan in some tv circuits etc so what happens is that here energy is stored in the help of a uh, what do you call the magnetic field that is the inductance so inductance of a coil so it is a coil of wire you know that it's a coil of wire so that inductance is dependent on various properties can you tell me some of the properties you can just guess on number the property the number of a coil more coils means more the inductance then you know that i can wrap a coil on the top of my hand like this so the core the inner material which on which the what you call the coil is being wrapped on so that is very important the type of wrapping different type of wrappings are available uh, are seen so it depends upon the type of wrapping then the length of the coil how 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 long is the coil is it a long one or a short one the cross-sectional area of the coil so these are the various factors in which the inductance of a material depends you just need to simply understand it and just note down the points in the number of the coils the type of the wrapping the core on which the wrapping is done the cross-sectional area on the wrapping the cross-sectional area of the wrapping and as well as the length of the coil as well as the number of layers of winding the number of layers of wrapping is also important so these are the various factors in which inductance of a inductor are to depend upon so two concepts we have discussed one is the concept of capacitor and inductor most important one is the capacitor when compared to inductor in exam point of view here you can see a series circuit in inductor again series circuit the in an inductor and a parallel circuit you can see and different type of inductors that we use have been shown in this diagram like molded inductor air wound inductor iron powered toroidal inductor uh, ferrite power inductor variable inductor etc just for your understanding and just for the what you want just to um, have a simple understanding that's it no need to study any of those names to be frank like so now we need to discover or we are going to understand a very simple concept which we could not discuss in basic uh, concept part one that is the concept of conductor insulator and the semiconductor I, th I think i don't need to discuss it at all conductor is an ob a substance or a material which enables the passage of electricity for example all the metals for example iron silver uh, uh, aluminium etc all of those materials are the passage insulator do not allow the passage you know that plastic uh, glass etc are the examples of uh, insulator semiconductors their conductance to the electricity lies between insulator and a conductor so example is a uh, germanium and silicon etc so a very basic idea just just to brush up your ideas that's it okay. and important concept that we need to focus on today's discussion is the concept of magnetism so what is magnetism they might ask you this in your vivas or as a short note question in different in exams so what is magnetism magnetism is a property of a material or magnet is a property of magnet is a material which produce magnetic field so that's a simple definition so magnet is a material that produce mag magnetic field so mag what is magnetism magnetism is a force produce force of nature produced by moving electric charge so magnetism is a force of nature produced by the moving electric charges so that is very important uh, definition is not much important but the concept that we are going to discuss in the following sessions are much important so what are the properties of magnet i'm pretty well sure that all of us have played with magnet we had different type of magnet in our childhood 
and sometimes even we see the kids nowadays playing with magnets but mostly um, the previous generations so we used to play with magnets nowadays kids play with what you call the mobile phones so what are the properties of those magnets can you can you just correlate so magnets always arrange in north south pole direction whatever way we keep it magnets arrange in north and south direction the same poles of the magnet north pole and south pole you know that magnet contains two poles the north and south poles the same poles repel each other and unlike poles attract each other so north pole and north pole repels each other but north pole and south pole of a magnet attract each other magnet has a property to transmit its magnetic property to the materials which it comes in contact suitable material not all the material for example you can see that uh, if you if you take a magnet to some uh, what you call uh, a test full of uh, what you call some iron uh, iron core or iron iron so what happens is that when you place the magnet on it all the iron particles just get attracted to that and some of these particles also gets a property of magnetism at least for a short while so it has the property of transmitting the magnetic property to suitable material as well as it attracts the suitable materials example the iron that i i described it did not attract the sand but the iron in the sand iron particles in the sand the magnet attracts and magnets produce magnetic field all the magnets produce a magnetic field in and around the magnet so these are the different properties of magnets it's it's important to be frank Let's see again into the properties of magnet through this diagram. Magnets attract objects made up of iron, nickel, etc. You can see the second diagrams. You can see the poles of the magnets. Poles always exist in pairs and they cannot be separated. So the poles always exist in pairs, north and south poles, and poles attract each other. The opposite poles and same poles repel each other. You can see from the this diagrams. Opposite poles of the magnets attract each other and same poles repel each other. And if a magnet is suspended freely by a thread, it always aligns in north and south direction. That's why magnetism or magnet was used in helping with the direction in earlier generations for sailing and so on. That's not much important. Right? So something else that is important again is magnetic lights of horses. They might ask you what are the properties of magnet? It's very easy. So what are the properties of magnetic lines of forces? What are this concept known as magnetic lines of forces? Any idea? Magnetic lines of force is nothing but an imaginary light that exists in between or exists around a magnet. So magnetic line of force is an imaginary line representing the direction of magnetic field. So it is a imaginary line which helps or represents the direction of the magnetic field of a magnet. It doesn't exist, but it's just imaginary line. Okay. So what are the properties of magnetic lines of forces? A short way to understand is magnetic lines of force is the property of magnets. So the properties of magnets are the properties of magnetic lines of forces with some difference. Let's discover the properties of the magnetic lines of forces magnetic lines of forces are closed curves the first important thing is magnetic lines of forces are closed curve let's just look into these diagrams you can see that the magnetic lines of forces are closed curves and direction is always from north to south pole not from south to north pole but always from north to south pole because that is the orientation of the magnet no two magnetic lines of force can intersect each other because they are charged lines, the, so not two magnetic lines of force can intersect each other. Magnetic lines of forces converge, contract longitudinally and disperse laterally or dilate laterally. Magnetic lines of forces contract longitudinally and dilate laterally. The diagram again illustrates the same. So what are the concepts that we have discussed? Magnetic lines of forces are closed curves. Magnetic lines of force starts from north to line south pole. Magnets, so that are the important things that we have discussed so far. And then crowding of the magnetic lines of force represents a strong magnetic field. So if a magnet, if we can represent the magnetic fields as too many crowded then that means it's a strong magnetic field there is a strong magnetic field whereas if 
it is having less number of magnet number of magnetic lines or uh, they are like what is imaginary line but still if there is a large number of imaginary lines or large number of lines it shows the or strong magnetic field and if it is represented by less number of lines it's show meaning that it contains less magnetic field and the tangent to the magnetic field always gives the direction of the magnetic lines of forces direction magnetic line magnetic field at that point which if we have, might have discussed you might have studied in your plus two section it's not important how to calculate the tangent and what is the tangent over here just understand these are the different properties even if you cannot remember all these properties at least remember very few properties a few of them which is very easy like magnetic lines of forces have closed curves magnetic lines of force cannot intersect each other magnetic lines of forces always travels from north to south pole magnetic lines of force contracts and uh, distally they become they, they, they dilate uh, laterally and contracts for longitudinally crowding of the two magnetic lines of force means that they are having strong magnetic field and not crowding means it has less magnetic field etc right and now we see another important concept which is known as the electromagnetic induction which is the last topic in today's discussion so what do you mean by electromagnetic induction the phenomenon of generating electromotive force emf okay you might have heard about emf in your law classes so the phenomenon of generating emf by changing the number of magnetic field more magnetic lines of force associated with a conductor is called the electromagnetic induction so, so the phenomenon of generating electromotive force by changing the number of magnetic fields associated with the conductor is known as electromagnetic induction it's a means by which electricity is produced from magnetic field or magnets for example we have a coil of wire and a magnet if we bring the magnet and the coil of wire together and if we move the magnet from and to the coil of wire to inside the coil of wire and outside this motion can help in production of electricity so this is known as the electromagnetic induction so it's a phenomenon of generating of electromotive force by changing the magnetic lines of forces by changing the magnetic lines of forces is known as electromagnetic induction for the example is in a coil of wire if we are bringing a magnet to the coil of wire and moving away from the coil of wire if this motion continues if the motion takes place it helps in generation of electricity it is a means of producing electricity from the magnetism results from interaction between a conductor and a magnetic line of force which we have described already and then there is important thing to know in the electromagnetic induction people may not ask you because examiners may not ask you what is electromagnetic induction it's less likely but they might ask you one important question plus what is Lenz law what is Lenz law so the Lenz law is also known as law of electromagnetic induction so let's describe what that law is emf induced in a circuit is or such as to oppose the flux change rising to it flux change means the direction or the amount or the quantity of the electric charges that passes through it okay that is just the concept of flex charges but you can't define law in your own word you have to describe how the lens law is being defined so emf induced in a circuit is such a way that to oppose the flex change that is causing that what you call the emf induced so emf induced in a circuit is such as to oppose the flex change that is rising to it so that is known as the lens law let us describe that with the help of a diagram so you can see here in a coil of wire is shown a circuit is shown and the magnet is brought from north uh, north to south direction so what happens is that you can see that the arrows that is representing the current flow or the EM, emf induced if the magnet is moving in one direction the emf induced will be in a such a direction which is opposing that flow of charges which produce it you can see in the second diagram you can see if the magnet is moved in opposite direction so the orientation the arrow head of the charges also changes so that is known as lens law and induced current always flow in a direction such as to oppose the change 
which produce it electromagnetic induction so the an induced current always flow in a direction in such a way that it opposes the change which it produces that is known as the lens law you all do, do not need to draw the diagram explain lens law but you just need to understand lens law so you might need to study different laws like ohm's law you have already studied coulomb's law lenz's law inverse square law different different laws but how to remember the lens law is that related to electromagnetic induction so electromagnetic uh, induction or emf arising uh, arising from a conductor is in such a way that it opposes the flux change that uh, produces it remember in that manner and then induction can be of two types one is known as self induction and mutual induction that's only one that we need to study that is self induction and mutual induction let's see what it is self induction is the phenomenon due to which a back emf is induced in a coil as a result of change in current arising in it self means it's it's related to one particular coil itself so emf is produced in a coil as a result of change in current that is flowing through it mutual induction is the phenomenon in which induced emf is set up in a set of coils when current flow through the neighboring coil changes so uh, self induction is related to one particular coil and mutual induction is related to two or more sets of coils so that's most important thing that you need to remember i don't i don't suggest you studying the definition of self induction and mutual induction even if you understand that electromagnetic induction is the phenomenon this one you know how to define lenz's law and you just need to understand there are two type of induction that is the self and mutual induction need not remember the what you call the definition it's not much important but still let's just simply brief it it's a phenomenon due to which back emf is induced in a coil as a result of change in current flowing through it change in current flowing through one particular conductor itself or an inductor itself produce the self induction if two sets of coils are there it producing what you call mutual induction so that are the different concept that we discuss in today's video one is the capacitor or condenser then the inductor electromagnetic induction and magnetism as well as some concept of conductor insulator and semiconductor in this magnetism is very important you are to remember it in this one particular law is very very important i'm focusing on that in exam for example in your practical exams and why your exams etc so that is the lens law so that's all about today's video and if you like the video don't forget to click the like button and let me know your comments on this video i'll see you next time with